So those were examples of penalty kicks um, that were taken where there's a kicker and there's one defending goalkeeper. And so there's this table. Once you click on this on your problem, click the icon to view the penalty kick data, it, uh, it shows that, uh, that there are these two variables that we're looking at. The goalkeeper jumping to the left, the center, and the right versus the kick. Um, going to the left, the center, or the right. And so with this scenario, we're looking to see if, um, if these two variables are entirely independent of one another. So this is a contingency or an independence test. And the common setup for this is to assume independence and then to test to see if there's um, data to support that they're not in, that they're not that these two variables are not independent. So in general, what you're looking for for your null hypothesis is a statement that specifies that the two variables are independent in the null or the alternate I mean the alternative hypothesis, sometimes H1, sometimes called HA, is um, is to let's put that eight make that a one. And the alternative is a statement that talks about the dependence of these two variables. So that's not quite a complete statement. So what are we looking at? Well, jump direction versus kick direction. Um, so is the goalkeeper, is the goalkeepers, um, do the goalkeepers well, the, 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 the statement is that the goalkeeper's jump is independent of the kick direction. So that's what we're looking for in a hypothesis statement. So when you think about how to reword that, it's going to look like this. Um, the top variable, the goalkeeper's jump direction, is um, we're looking to see if that's independent of the kick direction. So goalkeeper jump independent of kick direction. Um, and for our contingency tests, independent, um, right, that that idea, independence, is always going to be a statement that's part of the null hypothesis. So right away, um, if you're looking for some of these, the fact that this talks about dependence, that's, uh, we're going to ignore that. Um, and so we want our statement to not talk about the action, but to talk about the dependence on the two variables. So this is how we would state the null and alternative hypothesis. Now, these, this is the data. This is what's observed. And we need to figure out what's expected. So there is, in a previous discussion, um, an example of how we could go about and figure out what those nine expected quantities are. And then we could go ahead and do uh, calculate the chi-square statistic where we take each one of those observed variables that correspond to a particular cell, observed minus expected, and then divided by expected, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So it would be the 56 minus whatever that value is, the 5 minus whatever that value is, and those differences are squared and then divided by expected. So your calculator will um, do the work for you and produce the expected values. So if you go into your calculator and uh, let's go and drop into matrix A, the values, oops, let's actually do it like this. We're going to go into matrix, let's clear this second matrix, let's move over to edit, and then you put in the values, the 56, the 5, the 40, so now we have those values, right, you enter those values in, you get those into matrix A. Notice that matrix B, C, and D are empty. There's nothing in those. 
now that we have matrix A entered, we're going to um, go ahead and run a test that will populate matrix B with the expected values. So let's do that. That's going to be our chi-squared test. This is a contingency test not a goodness of fit. A goodness of fit, we, were, we would be interested in looking at proportions to see if the proportions are the same. Um, so this one is a chi-squared test. The observed is in matrix A. We've seen that. Expected. Let's say that we want to put it into matrix B. So I'll say, um, let's do that. So put it in matrix B. That's going to be second matrix drop down to B, select that. So there's nothing in it right now, but once we hit calculate, what we're going to get is our test statistic and our p-value. So we're testing it at the alpha equals the 0 0.05 level. Our p-value is 0.04. So our p-value is lower than our than the level of significance. So it's lower than or equal to, but it has to be lower than or equal to that um, significance level. And it is. So that's reason enough for us to reject the null hypothesis that, uh, um, that those two variables are independent. So for this particular problem, I think that completes it. We have our hypothesis test, right? We have the null and alternative hypothesis. Remember the null will always have independence, an independence, a statement of independence. Number two, it asks for, asks for the test statistic. That chi-square value of 9.84 is the test statistic, and our calculator gave that to us, and our p-value is 0 0.04. Um, so the critical value of this, right, since we are now rejecting the null hypothesis, the critical value um, must be something lower than 9.84 9 if we're rejecting the null hypothesis. We didn't have to calculate the critical value since this, um, this test or the calculator, the technology did the work for us. Noticed, notice that in our calculator, um, we came up with the degrees of freedom of 9.84, or I'm sorry, degrees of freedom of 4. Um, and that's coming from degrees of freedom, number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. This is a 3 by 3, so this is a 3 minus 1 times a 3 minus 1. <clears throat> So the degrees of freedom is going to be 4. Also notice that when you look at your matrices, oops, let's clear this out. When you look at your matrices, you'll see that B is now populated and that these values in B are the expected values. Um, so you'll see a 46.36 versus a 56, which was what was observed. So that test statistic was calculated by taking the 56 and observed minus the 56.36 expected, squaring it, and then dividing it by the 46.36, and then repeatedly doing that. So you'll have nine sums, nine terms in that summation. Um, your calculator takes care of that chi-square test statistic, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to use technology for that. And then finally, if you need it to use... Um, the chi-squared table to calculate what the critical value is. Since the degrees of freedom was 4 and the alpha value was 0 0.05, you'd go over here to the 4, you'd go over here to the 0 0.05, um, and where those two intersect is the 9.488. So your critical value critical value is 9.488. 9.488. Our test statistic, as we'd expect, is over here because it's a value of 9.84 and it's in the rejection region. So once again, it 
that's consistent with what you um, with, with what you'd expect given the p-value.